Hello and welcome to this racing special, which we've called From the Horse's Mouth. Now, you know you've seen those programs where everything, everything goes wrong. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Miko. You made it then. Just. Just, yeah. Now, as I was saying, we're going to show you some of racing's funnier moments, such as... Then catch the cross as they come down. You'll be seeing bank. circus the acrobatics. Cow punch mistake, and he's gone. Not nine of us. No, he's hanging on for dear life here. Foul uh, play, down. worthy of an Argentinian football team. Professional blunders by professional commentators. But running towards the line, the Sundance kid, who surely only got to jump this 12th and final fence to collect. He's a good leader into the last now. Up and oh, a terrific mistake. And at the last, he's unshipped his rider. Free adverts for washing machine detergents. I just think it might be a, a touch of extra personal in the washing machine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood stunt riders and some of the headaches we have in bringing you live interviews. Did I hear last night on the, on the radio that uh, you were first, one of your first loves was racing when you went to the race course? Uh, no. Well, our guest this morning, Mikko Smith, is one of the bravest and certainly one of the most persistent jockeys I've ever come across. And in nearly all of these clips of accidents will be shown you, he's either been directly involved well, certainly hasn't been too far away when they've happened. Mick, has this got something to do with your eyesight, do you think? Uh, <coughs> well, my eyesight isn't what it was, bruv. But uh, I have <laughs> got a very, very highly developed sense of smell. Yes. Really? Oh, yes. I mean, I can, I can smell danger. I can, I can <laughs> smell it. And after something's happened, I can always smell it, you know? <laughs> if I get downwind of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I rely on the old <laughs> sense of smell. Now, you probably want to know why Mikko is our special guest today. I certainly now, do. <laughs> yes. Uh, the reason is quite simple. When you're presenting a program about cock-ups and gaffes in racing, well, who better to talk us through them than a top jockey who knows exactly what happened? Mikko, let's start by looking back on your racing week so far. Yes, um, yes let me just get myself... Uh, I can't concentrate with one of them, it's easy, you see. It's <laughs> better. Right, let's go. And it's crocodile oh, tears on the left side. Crocodile by Focus. Well, that makes two of you, Mick. Can you believe it? He's refused. And it's the Brazilian and Mikko Smith who's only one jump to take in this. Oh, there mm. he goes again. It's like you're perfecting temper, your rollover temper, technique temper. there. Yes, I was, I was quite pleased with that, yes. And it's Mikko and Smith this one, well, it's a kamikaze oh, horse, Mick. Well, I had lost a series. Actually, it's much more painful than it looks, you know. And it's Mick has got all to play for, just jumped. Leaning a bit far oh, forward in this no, fence, I mean. Yes, yeah, yeah. again. Will he ever get a winner? And I think With a little, little too, too far sideways here. Yeah, yeah, but you did your best to hang on. Suicidal, and he doesn't seem very happy about it either. Lining up for home, it's anyone's race. The Shamwar is the leader with Mikos. Oh, and oh, he's treated us to one of his special Mexican swallow dives. Now, and it's still leaning too the far forward on this one. At the helm, it looks yeah, like do you think this is like, probably because oh, maybe your centre of gravity is a little bit too far forward? Used to that mm, sort of mm. weight on his front legs. Now you see here, my horse is very well, does a beautiful Fosby floor. You see that here, I shouldn't think he practices that too much. And it's Basil Brush in the lead with Jeff. Another bit of sort of reminiscent of your old rugby playing days here. Beautiful tackle. I brought him down well, didn't I? And uh, on this clip, looks as though your horse is trying to dig a trench, is it? Must be a winner at last. We slipped on landing. Private audition and Mikko Smith forged their way clear of the rest of the chases. Oh, oh, Did you get a better view a from uh, this position? Oh, this on a clear day, you can see my house from there. And Mikko Smith is some now 20 or 30 legs clear, and he cannot fail to get his first winner. Oh, oh, no. Well, I suppose it would help if you get some horses that knew how to jump. This successful jockey, can you believe it? Well, Mick, if there's any consolation, just take a look at this guy. Hmm. Oh, 
Yeah, it's just like me and the wife when I've had a skinful. Or I can't rise to the occasion. Exactly. Come on, Dan. 1993 saw one of the most embarrassing and now infamous moments in racing history. Which quite aptly leads us into our compilation of non-starters. Now this is the ultimate non-starter and caused the starter himself, good old Captain Keith Brown, there he is, to become an overnight international celebrity. Now obviously qualifications for this job are being able to give an air of authority, being able to shout loud and to generally be used to getting your own way. But this really has been done to death. Sometimes things go wrong in life and that's that. And they're off. And they race away down to the first. Run of the you, I don't understand why they use an old piece of knicker elastic to start a race this important, do you? And they're being recalled. They're being recalled. And look there in the distance, that's what you call a completely armless recall, man. Now, around the world, there are thousands of races that are started every year. And sometimes, some things don't always go according to plan. Just look at these. Give it a bit more choke. Yes, go on. But uh, just about out of the handicap. Oh! And uh, one of them just uh, coming over backwards there. That's Gary Bardwell, isn't it? Yeah, this is, uh, this is you see, terrible. Inexperience, oh, really. <laughs> you see, he didn't know he was supposed to go to the stores the other way. Bardwell, a horrible fall. Mile and a quarter, they've got... And here's another definition of a dodgy start. And the Chandra has stayed in the stall. Now... Uh, Ah, uh, I don't know. The, guy the greatest. A fine exponent of the equestrian arts. Look at that. Do you see the way he alighted there? Wasn't thrown off, wasn't thrown, didn't fall off. A lighter a pack. They catch him, but uh, if you were watching with us yesterday, we had one standing up at the gate. And, uh, and the little lady of light, she's half in and half out. You see, you uh, just cannot the, give that uh, much ground away at the start. The here, here. Now, who's put that washing line up across the course? Well, uh, we use that for hanging out the jockey shorts, John. <laughs> There's a little, little joke there. Oh, well, uh, here he is again. This time it should be OK. Is it going to be OK? Well, no. Maybe uh, we spoke too soon. Look, poor bloke, he's barely on his roster and off they go. Yeah. Looking very casual about it, isn't he? <laughs> Good old Keith Brown. Gives it another go, and well, here you go. Hey, presto. What I'd like to know, excuse me for saying this, Mika, but mm -hmm. don't you have a, a weight problem eating all, all this food? Well, there's only a problem if you swallow, Derek. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm burning yeah, up. Me, I want to ask, I mean, what's your bottom weight? Mm, bottom weight? About a stone and a half. The rest of me, no idea. <laughs> no, but I mean, seriously, I mean, what's, what's the lightest you've ever been? Lightest I've ever been, uh, rough. Six pounds, three ounces. Because there wasn't much of a jockey in those days. <laughs> Now, both these guys being jockeys, they know what it's like to end up head first in the mud. I mean, it stands to reason, if you're going to fall off, don't do it on firm ground, because it's like hitting concrete. Do it in mud. Mud is nice and soft, and it's uh, rather nice to uh, slip about it as well. I can keep there. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but nobody seems to like taking the plunge, even when it looks as if all is lost. Just, just look at the way some of these guys make unbelievable efforts to, to hang on to their horses. Uh, to Seguin as they take the 10th and uh, Randerson made a mistake there and so did River Kyriok and his jockey has all but passed 
Very good position. This looks like he might come from the Isle of Man. No, I think what he's actually saying is, all right, I'll give you a kiss, but no tongues. That's what it looks like from here, anyway. It's truly remarkable. Well, passed by Master South Lad. They're both lost touch. Heading up now towards number seven, a plain fence, good leap by Fragrant Dawn. Mistake by Beach Road, and he's gone. Beach Road gone at the seventh. Uh, this, uh, this jockey here. You must have seen a fiver on the ground, I think. Look, 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 he's got it. Yep. No, I think just talking about <laughs> Good well a bit. And, uh, well, here we see a really novel bit of sidestep in action. Just another way of getting off. An ex-rodeo rider here. Called Bucking Bronco Willie. And let's look, look at this poor guy. This race from Australia, you can tell, they make him much tougher out there. The rider, he's gone. The rider was unseated in third placing, battling on there. Oh, he's still with that horse. He got dragged over the next fence. They come down towards the last. Storm Dust from Clearican. Storm Dust has gone there, hampered to Clearican. But Storm Dust unseats rider at the last, which is left. And Al Hashmi with the Shanois, the challenger. The Shanois on the outside, pretty well upsides Al Hashmi as they come to the fifth from home. But Le Chanois jumped it badly, and uh, finally his mistake was bad enough for him to lose his rider. But as they race now down towards the penultimate flight, coming to it now, Run Pet Run and Grace Card jumping together. In fact, Run Pet Run is really nothing with not game, and he's fighting right back. Grace Card had it between him, and then behind. The sprint, he's going about 35 miles an hour. And the awful thing happens, the saddle starts to slip. He told me this morning he tried to kick his feet out the stirrups and tried to get off, but oof, hit the ground very, very... He joins Power Punch in the lead, leads by a couple of lengths now to uh, Bradbury Star, and then catch the cross as they come now towards the next. On the inside is Power Punch, mistake, and he's gone on nine of us. No, he's hanging on for dear life here. Ah, uh, he's now gone, nine of us. Jellaby from Don, then oh, back on Camden Town as they well inside the final furlong. And it's Jellaby from Don, then comes Camden Town, formidable, racing into the closing stages. And Jellaby nearly down there. He's unshipped. He's unshipped to Ernie Taylor. And Don has gone on to win it. Don is the winner with the photo for second between oh, back and Camden Town. Three has times anyone seen my contact lens? Then came Claire Slipper and Monsanto. Behind Monsanto and Lars ah, yeah, there it was... Uh, Amazing. And I'm glad to say not all efforts to remain on board are, are sunk without trace. There are also moments in racing when the hours of practicing the home acrobatics have been known to pay off. And sometimes quite handsomely. In the contest, we started with nine. The others turned towards us and Kellyanne and David Burmesfield, one and two, a little between them. This is the look at this on the right. Oh, wait, the wait, out of the way. So he does well, but just look at the guy on the left. He does well, he? well at all to get back on board. Well, if he gets back, that would be a miracle. The fall of the other, he did get back. That was brilliant. Meanwhile, now towards the eleventh, which is the third last African safari. Just look at this guy. He doesn't inside. move an inch. Mortland's cross and Mortland's cross skidded there. He stayed on his feet, but he's lost six lengths. He's dropped. Well, look at so, the top right hand corner the there, there's a, an old mate of mine, he's an Indian jockey actually, Balan Singh his name is, and he's doing a marvellous job there isn't he? Double over on the far side, and they race downhill, and little to choose between them. Uh, here comes Raven Venture and Spy Hill, the leader's already at the next, and made a very this guy bad mistake, Rawhide. Farrell did a brilliant recovery to stay on board there. Aino Warrior left behind back in third, then follows a Perisida, and the others seem to be treading water at the penultimate flight. Yuluru steps through it, blunders badly, a brilliant recovery from the champion jockey. But, uh... Tim Brookshaw has lost his irons, you can see that still up dangling in front of his boot. What frightful luck. But that one's committed into the last, so that was just not it. Ouch. Um, and, <laughs> I'm still mad how, and now I'm really in desperate straits because I, I can't... I can't kick my iron out, and the saddle's just going further and further around. Um, and then my problem was, I couldn't pull up, because I was literally sort of half over the side of the horse, and eventually joined the who was behind me. He just, he's just looking to see if he left his wedding tackle in the saddle. He's definitely got his leg over anyway, yeah. so it's not done him too much harm. He thought I'd had a heart attack. <laughs> The problem here is he doesn't want to get his boots dirty. Amazing, a one in a million, a 
And just look at this one. This reminds you of that song. Roll me over, lay me down, and do it again. Absolutely I good think he's going to do it he again. He's going to do it again. Just the fence is the only danger to Kate. Just Willis watch this guy. He falls off here. Last. And he is down, is he? Yes, he <laughs> he does, has does well to stay uh, on it for as long as he does. On then he jumps back on. And still he's manages very to tired. win. He didn't want to jump that. And oh, if he's lady. And if his lady is oh down, over oh, down. Just look at this one. Horse on the second, or rather the jockey on the second. Unbelievable to ride without your irons and still win at Sandown. Plenty of style there, and there's a lot of style coming up also from this lad. Lots of experience, as you can see, the one on the left. It's a marvellous, it's a marvellous example for any aspiring young jockey. Yeah, aerodynamic. Now just watch this, this is a good example of how to use your neighbour's horse as a springboard. Joined by Brox Hill, then Tyrion Prince racing wide. Over on the right of the picture is Scarlet Holly, and also up with the leader's Emerald Moon. Remedy for Love just being pushed along to stay in touch as they run to the two furlong mark. Yeah, actually, this chap, he's just turning around the same. Runner on the rails. Who sucks? A lot of you, I think. The two Brox Hill. Over on the right, Scarlet Holly. Michael, I know being a top jockey brings about a certain amount of hardship. Oh, terrible, terrible hardship. I, I mean, keeping up a strict diet like that, obviously, you know, is not easy. What about practicing your, your riding style? Do you do that at home or in the stable? Ah, uh, not really, Derek, no. I mean, all the years of experience I have under my belt, or should I say girth, seems precious room for improvement, really. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't get involved then in, uh, in anything like this, then? And I just, you know, just push you up and down like No, this. it's not really my and scene, then, to be honest. You stick to, you know? you Look at that. The poor horse. Yeah, I'm just... I suppose if someone did that to your you neck, know, your eyes are probably like that, if you you carry on for five or Well, well minutes, that type of noise is more a case of 99 change hands, I think. If I did this a month ago, I would have been blowing like mad. <laughs> Well, here's one of the most remarkable sequences that can be found because when you watch it, you'll think that it's been rehearsed a couple of hundred times over when in actual fact it just happened by accident. And here comes Torville MD. I think this is what they call a, a, a double sulker. Well, that wasn't bad, but just take a look at these pair. Look like uh, the Bolshoi brothers. Couple from the ballet, maybe. Perfect unison. And it's a case of anything you can do, I can do better. Now, just watch this. This is one of the best examples of synchronised swimming you're likely to see on a race course. Actually, Mick, I think all these jocks were brought up in a circus. Yes. Well, it takes a lot of practice to get that good at falling over. Thank you. And good luck, Michael. Yeah, be lucky, sir. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Give it, thank you, John. Give it one round the back, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Where the hell is the pad? <laughs> now, the trouble with dealing with horses is that they are very intelligent animals and they do have a mind of their own. If they don't want to do something, there's no way you can get them to do it. I suppose it's a bit like having the, the in laws at Christmas or, or a politicians on, on, on truth drugs, John. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Yeah, well, all I can say, Gary, is a good job. They can't get their ooze into the tops of beer cans. <laughs> Come on, smarten yourself up. OK, I'll try. Well, I tell you what, we've got an unbelievable incident coming up now from Greece. And this particular horse is more interested in eating the other jockey's whip than winning the race. Watch this horse second left. He's trying to get the other jockey's whip. Either that or he wasn't fed that morning. 
Now, once again, here he is, right in the middle of the picture, the white blinkers. Watch the horse in the white blinkers. The jockey in the green now, whipping his horse, and he doesn't take too kindly to that. Give me that whip. No, nope, doesn't get it there. But he has another go. And here it is on the far side. Third from the right. You watch. And watch what he does to the jockey's whip on the grey. What do you think, John? Well, you can tell he's a great jockey, Derek, because, um, well, he's a cropper, that's isn't he? And that's not all. Have a look at this compilation of single-minded stupidity, not to mention blatant stubbornness by our four-legged friends. And for any of you thinking of taking up sports photography, well, before you do so, just take into account this poor fellow's experience at Edinburgh before you get too close to the action. Just watch this horse, he's been going off the tracks for some time, and now he's actually done it. He's going down to the two and a half mile start. Let's hope he knows where it is when he gets there because uh, it would really mar this race a little bit if he were withdrawn. But the way he's going at the moment is slightly better than Mark Dwyer. Oh, I've had enough of this. I'm off home. Place and Silver Wedge has broken down badly and fallen. Silver Wedge is out of the race and leaves just five of them and now threatening to be left out in front from Reprehend. There's never any empty space, is there? And when you think you've found one, there's always a mini in there. See, there's one. Ah, this'll do. Yes, no disabled signs anywhere. Should be all right here. Lovely. Incredible shots there. John, have you had problems like that with horses? God, no end. I can remember at Devon one day. Yeah. And it was... Excuse me? And Sorry, pl please continue. Well, carry on, carry on. Sorry. Oh, thank you. And it, it was re my meat. really foggy. Yeah. And um, yeah. 15 lengths clear going to yeah. the last. And this stag jumps over the fence and uh, knock this horse, knock this horse completely to the ground. Really? That's incredible. I know you, don't I? 
Excuse me. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those quiz shows on telly, aren't it? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. We're trying to do a live TV programme here. Now, what we're going to show you next are some clips. Now, John was talking there where he had problems with a stag, would you believe? We're going to show you a few clips now where the jockeys get it horribly wrong. Oh, a bit of bad luck, eh? I have a fair bit of bad luck myself, you know. Yeah. I'm very used to bad luck, which is ridiculous because I'm so well prepared. Yeah. I, I mean? I, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about it when it, when it goes well, wrong for the jockeys. Just, just as they're about to, to win the races. We've got some clips coming up very shortly here. What, what, uh, what we're going to have some clips on the old, uh, on the old telly there? Yes, yes. I'll, 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 be, I'll be able to tell you exactly where the racing's from, you know, because I'm a bit of an expert. Yeah. At racing, I know all the personalities to do with it, and uh, I can tell. Yeah. The, these these clips, these They're very these nice clips, socks, aren't they? With a Christmas present. These clips <laughs> prove what you must never do is count your chickens, especially if you earn your living from racing. The action happens on or near the winning line. Inside the last furlong, Hamanaka by half a length to Manbar. We'll see for back in third. And it's Hamanaka challenged now by Wan Bar. Man oh, I, see, I, I was on this one. I was on this one. Oh, Had a couple line. of monkeys on this, Hamanaka didn't it? Hamanaka goes down and Man Bar left the lucky winner. And with about 150 yards to go, it's Park Lawn still in the lead from Supreme Halo. Then comes Contender, but this is one for Park Lawn. Going clear, coming up to the line. Park Lawn's going to win this one. Then comes Supreme Halo. Oh, oh my golly. Oh, very, very nearly crashed right into the rails, but he's still the winner at the line. No, I was on this as well. Yeah. Two monkeys and a pony. I had on this. <laughs> now this, this is just terrible. I mean, I. I mean, look, he does this deliberately. I mean, that is absolutely the most crooked bit of race riding I've ever seen. Just a bad jog. Actually, I don't think he could help himself. Actually. No, I'm not so sure. Now watch him, this is the leader, the left, bottom left of the picture. Now he's coming up to the line now, he's got the race, one well clear, but just look what happens here, and he falls Well, he definitely did that deliberately, didn't he, that time? The line. There is the line. He's actually I mean, I had a couple of monkeys, a pony, and a flock of sheep on that one. There is no chance because he fell. Battle jumped the last, running about a lot, the leader dives violently away to his left. Now the birch is flying, the horse is trying to go into the crowd on the far side, and he's thrown the rider off! He has thrown the rider off, and Country Cap's rider has amazingly stiffed into the back of it, but he's still numbering on up towards the post. Country Cap is going to win this by some sort of miracle. Up the hill towards the finish now, and racing towards oh, the this line. Is Skalern, two I mean, my bookmakers, I tell you, they deliberately let those horses out. Oh yeah, and I suppose you had a load of flying pigs on that one as well, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Just look at this one, this jockey on this horse has an amazingly lucky escape. What's this? Ben Hur or something? And just look here, Willie Carson. Well, all I can say that um, after this little attack, look at that. Good job he didn't want to be a jump jockey. Oh, now I remember this. I was just leaving for the bar to celebrate, and you look what happens. Yeah, well, I think your bookmaker must have started quite a fire from your punt in. Yeah. There are some things that go on at race courses that are just too unbelievable for words. Yeah, I've had some unbelievable moments, I can tell you. Sorry. Well, we can have a look at a few of those right now. Hello? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It doesn't stand a chance. Not a chance. Now, you want to get on Pat Erie in that one. But I spoke to Pat's agent's wife's cousin, twice removed, and uh, it's a certainty. What? No, no, it hasn't got a ch What? Well, what the hell does Lester Piggott know, for heaven's sake? <laughs> anyway, yeah, look. No, get on Pat. Yeah. All right, certainty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you might think this is the afternoon steamer, but in actual fact, Willie Carson reckons he left his coat in the back of that car and five grand in the pocket. Now, look, now look at this. I mean, now, and you see, under the now under the new FIFA rules, that is a shoulder charge, and it's a red card, definitely. Sending off the fence. A long way clear, but uh, running very wide and running off course. Spinning Saint has taken the wrong circuit. It's now, here's a race that's being run on the Camomile Law, and uh, 
A couple of the jockeys look as though they got the hump. Two more for the knackers yard. Well, three if you include uh, the bloke up in the corner, obviously. And how about that? I think you've got to agree that those two are carrying a little bit too much condition. Now, I hope this race isn't over hurdles. No, it was me that had a coat in the car with five thousand in the pocket. Actually, I think it was ten pounds. And this puts a new me into the phrase "humping your way to success," I believe. And uh, a couple of humps there. Now this I don't understand. Why didn't they jump that fence? Well, it's simple because it's a handicap race. But all these horses are completely blind. Ah. Prerogative in the centre to lean to his left and interfere with Gloss. Meanwhile, confusion was making his run on the wide outside, but he too veered left and squeezed out the weakening Royal Prerogative. It all ended with the fourth horse, Brooke, being awarded the race. Now then, have you ever wondered why the jockey Michael Roberts is called the Pope? There you go. Wonder no more, bless you, my son. Don't put your trust in horses, well, I'm afraid a few punters do that. And beware of the dog. I'm not sure they're going dog racing after today. Just arriving at the barbecue there. Yeah, get the burgers and sausages, Fred. I'm starving. Oh, I remember this one. It's the three furlong mother care novices handicap, isn't it? Yeah, that was mine. I think we must have all been off our trolleys in this race. And the winner by five grams is number three. He really made it look like child's play, and he looks extremely nappy about it. Well, I think that's what's called bending the rules. Who said that the stewards could be stuck in the muds? Now, get on Frankie de Tory in that one. Yeah. Now, I spoke to his wife's brother's greengrocer and he's an absolute cert. Yeah, guaranteed. And now live coverage from the racetrack at Flamingo Park. And who said you need to be on a football pitch to score? Scottish horse giving him the Glaswegian kiss. And here's Steve Smith Eccles where he's put in a, an unusual method of losing weight just before a race. There's a moral to this story, I think. Make sure you glue your wig down when you're wearing a cap.
Well, there you are. They finished lunch. Where they go home now? Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I've got to be off. I'm going to get busy. It's been lovely. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it has. Edward is in the last. Have your shirt on it. Yeah. yeah. You have your socks on. Thanks, Thank you. Thank God for that. Absolutely. Anyway, as I was saying, it is amazing, isn't it, what happens on Britain's race courses. Thankfully, that doesn't go on every day. And sometimes it's through fate that causes these lovely problems. Now, what about the commentator? Now, the commentator has a split second to pick out the horse, another split second to describe what is happening. And sometimes, although the commentator wants to say the right things, doesn't always follow. Raleigh Gilberts is a case in question. He is one of our most famous and favorite racing commentators, but it seems that every time he opens his mouth, something disastrous happens next. From the other two, Banner's nephew and gamekeeper, but running towards the line, the Sundance kid, who's surely only got to jump this 12th and final fence to collect. He's a good leader, into the last now, up and, oh, a terrific mistake, and at the last, he's unshipped his rider, and that means a battle now between Takasaki and some surprise, so poor... Now a weakness has come right through, in fact, to take second, and Borden is down, Borden is gone, at the third from home, the horse, though, up all right on his feet, and, uh, in fact, Bill Smith almost got hold of it, and Spindrift has gone too, oh, drama here at the third last and at the second last. Bort went first, then spin drift, and so that leaves never weak and well clear. Well, this is a lucky winner if ever I saw one. Coming to the final fence now. This is the last. Never weaken. And he's down too! Never weak. Would you believe it? Never weaken goes as well. And barring a fall, this is an assured winner now. The six to four on shot. Badsworth boy to find top weight here. Coming to the last. Full of running. He's only got to jump the last. Up and over. It's the flight. In fact, he pecks on landing. Slithers and Colin Tommy Carmen is off and he's running behind the side the horse trying to get on again he's got on but that's left here Capitan clear and run over is a long so long way behind the others I think you can forget about that one he's got to be 50 lengths behind the last one of the main body of the field and so they continue round the turn and there's still little to choose now between Grockel on the inside John Dell right there with the leaders and so too as they start to come round our gem and Broccoli Bell also appears on the scene, but they're running now towards the second last, and as they do so, it's old Gem, still the fractional leader, from Fit for a King right there in contention, Faithful Don now goes on, and so they're inside the final quarter mile, Brian Riley on Faithful Don, now in the lead, being challenged on the far side for Fit for a Queen, Brockle Hart trying to put Hart in the chase there as they come now towards the final flight, it's Faithful Don now just holding off the advance attack, but run over has come from absolutely nowhere, has come right up to join them he really dropped his bit but run over has come an amazing race and now takes up the running and i've never seen a winner win like this because he was stone cold last and now he's streaking away to win it and run over is the winner by some 10 lengths from faithful don and it's trepenna who leads from dark record on the inside of him back in third is flodden field and they come to take the first and uh, oh my goodness gracious me dark record of faller at the first and uh, that went on the flodden field was hampered so the favorite's gone at the first i'm afraid i was uh, a bit of wishful thinking wasn't it asking them to all get round safely but it's trepenna the leader over the second and uh, there flodden field went so we're down to three and good news about flodden field the horse has been remounted we may be seeing him as they continue their journey down the far side mr boston the leader from trepenna in second and then achil tibui is in third and on the ground i'm afraid so mr boston is the leader from trepenna now as they head towards the fifth from home and it's mr boston the leader from trepenna mr boston comes to take it and uh, he's a faller so that one's gone so just got one left now but the leader at this stage is uh, coming down towards the third from home. Trepenna comes to it, and he's gone. Right, now then, are we in for some fun? Well, all I can say is I'm glad I escaped that compilation, John. Well, you might have done there, Derek, but I'm afraid the next section has got you as principal feature. Oh, no. I'm afraid, oh, yes. Oh, and no. we've called it, it'll be all right on the day, as it deals with live television broadcast at race meetings, all those interviews those uh, double entendre and silly moments and as Derek uh, carries out rather more of these than anybody else he's more open to things going wrong well 
That's his excuse, but uh, I'm afraid we know better. Whoa, but hang on, before we talk about that, Chili Bangers, not too, too keen to go... No? What happens here, Jeff? Well, I don't... I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just think, <coughs> I just think it might be a, a touch of extra personal in the washing machine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you could say that. <laughs> There's a really beautiful Robin Hood type hat. Well, Robin Hood used to have feathers in his hat anyway. I'd, I'd say she knows a pheasant clucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope so anyway. <laughs> yes. Right, well, from one pheasant clucker to another, here's Graham. Just, just pausing for breath. And then exhibit air going to the stores. There. Don't jump, don't jump in the red and black. Oh, that Frank really should carry a health warning. Here we go. And they're off. Homeroom Jester is away quickly. Galliace is there. Sing my tune. And Hicka Maka Raka Dakalola. And SW Wildcard toward the inside. Five to two favourite. That's horse number six. Horse number seven is badly drawn on the far side. She likes to lead, but can she get across to the inside rails? That's number seven's problem, and I've got a problem here with this chap. All I can <laughs> advise you is that they have jumped the first flight of hurdles. Look at this! This is absolutely unbelievable here! I know my poor old hat's going to go in a minute. The crowds are fleeing! Being absolutely drowned. Look at the bookmakers here. They're trying to cover up their money. All that's getting soaked in their hands, the money. I think we're all going to be blown away in a minute. Come racing! This is what happens when you come racing. There's nothing like it. A day in the races, it doesn't always like that. And someone wants my autograph! Cheerio! Our quads would be a good bit heavier than that. <laughs> Perhaps she just didn't fancy him. <laughs> yes. No, the, the cameraman apparently had a slight fall, but we hope no damage was done. Sing My Tune is in between those two. Then there's a gap of three to Dola Hicka Makaraka Dola, and then Galley Ace is in between horses. And uh, that's the secret of racing, to keep cheerful as you give them your money. Be a lot of people queuing up to send mares to this horse when he does go to stud. He's a really good moving horse, been incredibly consistent over a variation of distances. And if they were sending Ray Cochran to stud, I dare say there'd be plenty of people sending their daughters to him because he's pushed the head off this horse. But jokes about Walter Swinburne's black eye were not taken lightly. Well, look after the shiner. Yeah. <laughs> it's a terrible sight. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. It's a better looking than you, bro. Well, there you are, you see, and you can hit me too. <laughs> what does it, what difference, come here, Bambi, will you sit down? What difference does it make, I mean, having a goat in the box of a, a thoroughbred? It just keeps you company and keeps the company something to look at, man. Mm. Come here. She's not been very good on TV, is she, today? Come on, we'll come over. Oh, she's done a poo as well, I think. Yeah. Oh, thank you. No wonder we've got to poo. He badly, needs, he badly needs a split, but gets it, and I hear they're laying odds on out of funds. Would you lay odds on out of funds? I rather thought Morango might get up. Well, if Morango's got up, I'll go and cut most of the grass in the paddock. <laughs> as you see, bright sunshine as they await the judge. And here we are. <laughs> Test number three. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> Luckily, there isn't much grass in the paddock, but it's, it's, it's pretty short already. <laughs> and for the first time ever on television, another exclusive on Channel 4, we'll be asking Reggie the dog which paper he prefers. Is it the Racing Post? Is it the Sporting Life? This is an absolutely incredible dog. He picks one. Oh, <laughs> get out! Would you get out? Would you give us my top back, Reggie? They're going to have a super day on, on the, at the Whitbread in a fortnight's time. I hope they really enjoy it. But one thing, Greg Jockey, you hardly ever rode in the Whitbread. Too good a race for you, was it, old chap? Came the wrong time of season for me. I was always a little bit portly like you are this time of I year. I beg your pardon. Don't refer to my physique. Well, I hope you all have a good time as we've right, had here in the press here, room this lovely. morning. Right. Well, he hates practical jokes and I just hope that he's talking to everybody by the time we get to the Whitbread. With a bit of luck, he'll give the competition winners a horse to back.
Jester is now back to sixth, about six lengths off the lead. And then it's Dick Haka Makarakadola, and then Michael Pryor. That was very, very hard work, what I was going through there. Well, I'm trying to do you. You actually get lost. The, the pain barrier. Actually, no, it is incredible because she really works hard at you. She's a remedial therapist, and she found muscles that I'd pulled years ago that still weren't right. And she is incredible. I know a lot of jockeys swear by her, and a number of jockeys, Peter Scudamore, whatever, if they have a bad fall, instead of going home on a Saturday night, they go straight to see her. And the beauty of it is that she drops everything for any jockeys. What I mean to say is that any client she has... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> oh, oh, thing. What did she drop for you, Tom? <laughs> Congratulations, John. I know this is for you. And where's your, where's your jockey? Where's he gone? Richard Hills, where is he? He's riding, he's disappeared. John, what can you say? Pint of bald milk, just what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Congratulations and well done. Now, let's put you all on the spot. We've all discussed what we think is going to win. Where's the money going to go for the charity bet? Safford at Stratford for me. Safford at Stratford over jumps. Julie Cecil's little poppet at Catterick called Mary Hinge. Good job you said that the right way. Last of all, still, Barrett's Town Boy as they jump the one in front of the stands for sevens. Golden Autumn. Except that there aren't any stands, of course. And on the subject of unexpected replies, did I hear last night on the, on the radio that uh, you were first, one of your first loves was racing when you went to the race course? Uh, no. This is now fading, followed by homeroom jester, and the trailer is Dolo Rolo Rolo Rakadaka Molahola. Hey, I did like this, Bill Wyman. Strike a light. It's Bill <laughs> at a lung cancer charity night. Only Bill Wyman can get away with that. But whether it affects his sex life? Well, we'll have to see, because there's been a survey reported in the Star. It says men who smoke risping a big flop in bed. New research shows that too many puffs, I did say puffs, a day can ruin your sex life. Doctors have found that oxygen is vital for a man's manhood, and anything that stops the flow, like smoking, can cause impotence. Researchers in California and Israel tested males at various stages of sexual activity. Well, they never came to me while I was sexually active, but I do smoke a good large Havana cigar. All girls say I've got a big one. <laughs> And roll, probably. <laughs> <laughs> when you get on a good one, you know. Well, he made it look easy. What about Sally and Charles? Did you like to see Daddy, did you? Who's the best jockey? Frank. <laughs> Frank is the best jockey. Je pense que le changement de It's got to be in English. No, I speak English. Are you speak English very well. No, no. Can you. No? I don't speak English. You can't. <laughs> you can't say, I think he's a very good horse and I think he'll go. <laughs> No, uh, no interpret? No, no, we want it in English. Can you not speak in English? Yeah? No, I speak English. Okay, all right. Not too much. <laughs> French. We'll do it in English after the race. Not to worry, doesn't matter. Okay, we'll see you later. <laughs> I thought you were talking to him beforehand. Why are you talking to him in French? All right. Yeah, you can't tell you treasure. Well, we can't follow that, and we're not even going to attempt to. We're just about at the end of the program, but before we go, I'd like to say a very special thanks to our special guest on the program, top jockey Mick O'Smith. And we'll be back on the day he eventually rides a winner. Bye-bye. <laughs>